engage in activities that could overwhelm the state. But what are the relevant questions in this regard? I, one of the uh, one dimension of the story is that even cats were arrested from uh, Sunday Igbo's house because uh, those cats were, were were considered suspicious. No, 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 no. And that they could be part of the separatist secessionist agenda. And I was wondering why the Nigerian state will not just arrest human beings, but will also arrest cats. Now, the Department of State Services... No, no dimension to that. The State Department, uh, the Department of State has not accounted for those cats in the uh, reports that was given by Dr. Afunaya. And then what was all that uh, drama about the destruction of a uh, property? Is that part of the mandate of the state? I know they can hide under the fact that there was a shootout, but you know, the other camp, the Sunday Go camp, is presenting that as a deliberate attempt, uh, not just to apprehend, but also to destroy uh, the space. What do you think of that uh, Gestapo style that was adopted? Ruben, you see... Still in the news, the indigenous people of Biafra has warned that nothing must happen to its leader, Namdi Kanu. The organization, which said Kanu was kidnapped by the government agents, promised to expose details of his abduction later. Spokesperson for IPOB, Ima Powerful, said these in a statement titled, Nothing Should Happen to Our Leader, IPOB Tells Federal Government. According to him, the IPOB would not be intimidated into backing out of the struggle despite Kanu's arrest. And joining us via Zoom is the legal representative of Namdi Kanu, Barista Aloy Ejimako. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. All right, quickly share with us, you know, what is uh, the plan now that your client is in detention? Well, first of all, uh, there are some preliminary issues that have to be ventilated before this matter can ever come to trial, if at all. You see, we are talking of a situation where uh, a citizen of the United Kingdom left the soil of the United Kingdom and to a trip overseas, and while he was in transit in, in an East African country, uh, which has just been revealed to be Kenya, uh, he was seized uh, from the soil of that country and forcibly brought into Nigeria against his will and against the will of the British authorities. You see, there are certain domestic, municipal, international, and United Nations laws that should guide actions like this. There are mutual legal assistance treaties there are laws on extradition proceedings. There are UN conventions on international fugitives. And Interpol, of course, has its own rules. Nigeria, too, has. And Britain has. So how come none of these rules were followed uh, before uh, Kano was seized again? This is it. Well, I'm brought it. This is exactly what we're talking about. So it is going to be an issue of the propriety of his being here against his will before we can even come to any question as to whether he committed any criminal offense or not. But when it comes to that, it's really going to revolve around what they are alleging he did. This whole thing is about self-determination and his request for referendum none of which is listed under any written law in Nigeria as a criminal offense. So what really is he being accused of? It's not very clear, you know, that he's right. being accused of any specific offense. And in the circumstance, he should be regarded as a political prisoner. Simple. Okay. This matter is not, for, it's not criminal. It's political. All right, can so you share, can you share a little... To be looking at yeah. Um, hopefully, we before we go, we can talk about. Hopefully, before we go, we can talk about the uh, the case proper. But can you share a little bit more on um, why he was in Kenya, why he travelled, and you know the details concerning his um, being picked up in that country and brought to Nigeria? Is there a little bit more that Nigerians need to know? He has a right to travel, and he wasn't an international fugitive. Right? He might have been regarded as one by the authorities in Nigeria. But in every nation of the world, he was a free man. So he could leave the UK to go to the US, to Canada, to parts of Africa, Asia, anywhere he wished to go. 
in the pursuit of his private business or the business of the indigenous people of Biafra. So to waylay him and seize him without the process of law and bring him into this country when he wasn't traveling on a jam passport is something that really should shock the conscience of every man and woman out there. Okay, well, some of the, you know, things that have been mentioned, uh, you know, uh, that he is accused of, you know, a treasonable felony and, um, and the likes. Um, what would your response be to those who say that, you know, he uh, basically, you know, had pushed his members and uh, members of the IPOB into committing crimes here in Nigeria? Um, you know, and of course, uh, the attacks in the southeast, the attacks on, on the security agents. Um, is there a response that you can also share uh, from your angle? Well, you see, uh, it's not only that you can accuse, you also have to prove. So it doesn't stop with just, you know, leveling um, allegations. Uh, you have to keep in mind that since uh, October 2017, when the IPOB was declared uh, a terrorist organization in this country, and when, and going back to even 2015, when mass arrests of IPOB members began to occur, to date, there has never been a single conviction of an IPOB member for any violent crime, not even to talk of terrorism. So isn't now the crime going to be the first? We just have to look at the laws of statistics. IPOB has millions of members and thousands have been arrested since 20, late 2015. Till then, none has been convicted. All we hear about is arrest, arrest, and charging them for terrorism, treasonable felony, Reason that's not enough, and the reason for zero conviction is easy to see. I don't think Nigerian judiciary, in the end, will believe that any member of IPOB actually committed any of these offenses that they are being accused of committing. That is why I say that to some extent, I have implicit confidence in the judicial authorities of this country to see through all of this that this is not a matter for the criminal. Cause, but a matter for the political process. All right. Finally, uh, what is uh, his uh, legal team like? And currently, he is in detention. Are there still any of his rights that have been uh, um, uh, broken? Uh, there's videos circulating the internet, seeing him being blindfolded uh, while being moved uh, in and out of court. Um, you know, what is his? Do you have any idea of his current condition while in detention? Well, I have to tell you. Uh, quite honestly, the manner of his arraignment was quite shocking. Uh, the authorities were aware well of the fact that uh, Mr. Kanu has attorneys of record. They should have been uh, notified. Arraigning him without benefit of counsel is a violation of his constitutional right to counsel. And this one, you're talking about blindfolding and all that, even though it's unverified, if it happened, it too uh, violates his, his uh, constitutional right to, to personal dignity and not to be treated, you know, to be treated decently. So all of these things, uh, will, 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 you know, will come into play when uh, when time comes for the hearing. Uh, but going forward, we hope that uh, with due regards to the attention this matter uh, is generating, both nationally and internationally, the federal government will be wise to treat him fairly.